The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus. Kneeling down, he begged Jesus. He said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him. He said, I do will it. Be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning the man sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell nobody anything about this, but go and fulfill the law. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses, the law of Moses, prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away, and he began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus even to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Sorry, I forgot to welcome everybody. Welcome, everybody. Uh, it's nice to have you all here. We have some friends here, and uh, I think all of us are friends, I'd like to believe, baptized into Jesus. We are brothers and sisters. All the folks up in the lobby there, or whatever that's called uh, here, uh, mezzanine, uh, you don't, I guess you don't call it a mezzanine, do we? Balcony. Uh, and all the folks that uh, have come to celebrate Mass here at St. Saint Greg's tonight. It's great to see you all. And those who see us through the miracle of electronics, uh, there are more people, when I first heard Father Joe tell me that he was doing this, the TV thing, I, said, I thought it was kind of one of those far-fetched ideas. Not that Father Joe ever has far-fetched ideas, but that that may have been something that snuck into his head one day. But it was an amazing gift to the people of the parish and to people at large because even I can call it up on the computer. And I remember one day coming out of the confessional and uh, still thinking that this really was a whole lot of uh, machinery. And this one older couple said, oh, Father, we saw you on TV. And I said, where, what was I doing? A police report or what? <laughs> and they said, no, on TV, we're saying mass. And we watch that every week because sometimes we, we can't always get out especially when the weather is bad. And I thought to myself, what a wonderful tool of evangelization, right? That there are wonderful things. It's when we misuse the gifts that God has given us, that we have science, sciencia without sapientia, knowledge without wisdom. And yet this is one of those great ways of using the gifts God has given us. Anyway, uh, Jesus really... Uh, shows caution to the winds. We heard in the very first reading you read at the beginning from Leviticus. Leviticus is one of the books of the Torah. There's Genesis, Exodus, the key book, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Leviticus, Levi, the tribe of Levi, didn't have land of its own. Their job was to keep the religious tradition, so that's what they do. If you read the book of Levi, it will tell you all the customs, all of the things that good practicing Jews should follow. And one of them is you didn't get anywhere near someone with leprosy because it was so highly contagious. They had to live off on their own, as the scripture tells us today. And they had to ring a bell anytime they came near people. 
and they had to shout, unclean, unclean. I'm, in other words, I'm not worthy. I'm horrible. Stay away from me. I'm a bad person. They had to do that until the day they died, which was soon because it was a horrible disease. Jesus still goes to this poor man who recognizes the power that Jesus Christ had for him. He was humble enough to know he needed the Lord. And he reached out for grace. This is what St. Paul is all about. You can never understand the writings of Paul without understanding that. Galatians, Romans. The idea that we are saved by divine grace. I was noticing, I was praying a little bit before Mass. I love our statue of the Blessed Mother over here. The, it is Our Lady of Grace. And it is especially meaningful to me because my parish growing up was Mother of Divine Grace in Chichuaga. And we didn't have that statue until later. Um, not that particular one, but that artist's rendition. We had one a little bit bigger than this, but we had old, an old plaster statue. It was beautiful. It was meaningful to us. But when that one came, it was so, so beautiful that you just can't take your eyes off of it because it's not the Immaculate Conception. The statue before was. This is Our Lady of Grace. That God's goodness and grace came through this young girl saying, let it be done to me according to your word. Anyway, there was a story uh, that I'm going to share with you. It's about this Marine. Uh, a man collapsed on a busy street in downtown Brooklyn many years ago, actually. Within minutes, an ambulance had rushed to the scene and took him off to Kings County Hospital. There he kept calling out for his son. He wanted his son. A nurse who was on duty found a dog-eared letter in the man's wallet and learned that his son was a Marine and he was stationed in North Carolina. And that night, an anxious Marine, for another reason, showed up at the hospital. And immediately, the nurse took him to that old man's bedside. The man was so heavily sedated that he didn't know quite what was going on. So the nurse had to tell him several times, your son's here, your son is here. And finally, the old man opened his eyes. He could barely make out his son's face. But he recognized that Marine uniform, that unique uniform that is the Marine uniform. And at that point, the son took his father's hand and he held it lovingly. For the rest of the night, the Marine sat at the old man's bedside. Occasionally, he would pat the man's hand to let him know that someone was there. He spoke to him tenderly, softly whispering. And several times, the nurse came and said, why don't you take a break now and go to the cafeteria, get something to drink, catch a nap. You've been here all day. But the, the Marine refused. Toward dawn, the old man breathed his last, and he died. The nurse extended her sympathy to the Marine. And the young man said, well, who, who was that man? He, wasn't he your father? And the Marine said, no, he wasn't. I never saw him before in my life. I never saw that man before in my life. Well, why didn't you say something, the nurse said. Well, I would have, but I could see that he was too sick, and I realized I wasn't his son. I could also see that he was slipping fast into another way of being, and that at this moment, he needed a son. So, I decided that I would be that son. I chose to share this story with you for two reasons. First, it shows us the kind of compassion that Jesus had, like the way he treated the leper in the gospel. When he saw the leper, Mark says very simply, he was moved with pity. He stretched out his hand, 
and he healed him. He knew there were consequences. He knew the leadership was waiting for him to do something that they could charge him with. And this was exactly the thing they would be looking for. But this is what the Marine did, really. He stretched himself beyond what he would have been expected to do. Others would have said, oh, that's very nice, and just moved along. Or after about 20 minutes, he would have said to the nurse, you know, I'm not really his, his son, but God bless you for your, your kind nursing work, and moved on. But he didn't. He stayed all night. He shared the same kind of compassion with that old man that Jesus did with the leper. That's the key thing here. The thing that's so beautiful is that that Marine was gladly willing to pay a very high price. There's a great writer, a great Christian writer, uh, was a Lutheran minister, evangelical Lutheran in the war, or during, in Germany during the Second World War period, back in the 30s, actually. His name was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And he wrote a wonderful book, The Cost of Discipleship. That discipleship is not cheap. It's not just going through motions. It's costly grace. It's always a gift from God. Grace is a gift. But it comes at the cost of our receiving it, of our opening ourselves up to it, to reaching out to others when they need us to bring grace to them as we have received grace from God. And that man did that, just as Jesus did. He was willing to invest and use costly grace. The practical question is, how does this all apply to us? And I think you can see very obviously what it does. The stories invite us to reflect on the quality of our compassion. It's too easy to worry about bananas. It's too worry, easy to worry about temporal things. But God calls us to be open to the miracle that's needed in the moment. And how compassionate can we be? How sensitive to the needs of the moment, the broken hearts around us. 